Oh, hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga, and this is episode number 536. That's 536 of the Agostino Zynga Show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga, and I'm so glad you're here to join me once again. If it's your first time checking out the show via YouTube, make sure you click that you know like button, hit subscribe if you like what you heard at the end of it, and of course, leave me a comment if you have any questions, suggestions, um, funny remarks, support, hate, whatever. Leave it down below. I'd be greatly appreciative of this. Look at it, like it, or completely ignore it. If you're listening via the multitude of podcast apps that exist out there, it's specifically, especially, specifically and especially, if you're listening via Spotify, please make sure you leave me a rating on there. There's an option to leave ratings on the podcast you listen to so make sure you leave me a rating i don't care what rating is one to five stars whatever you want to do leave me a rating let people know that you're listening to the show it helps to build up their algorithm and whatnot make it more discoverable and just makes it look good when people search for it so they see some ratings when it's got no rating on it, it looks a bit dead like no one's listening to it but i know i've already got a couple hundred people on there listening so please make sure um that you do leave a review on there if you can i'd be greatly appreciative of it of course and last but not least support via patreon is also more than welcome the bonus episodes going at the end of this week it's going to be a couple of reviews of some documentaries i've watched so if you want to check out that sort of stuff reviews on documentaries more kind of in-depth stuff that i don't normally do on my main podcast stream then please check out my patreon at patreon.com forward slash agostino that's patreon.com forward slash a g o s t i n h o i've got a couple of backers on there already i think i've added one the other day if i can get one more today that'll be greatly appreciated of it actually let me shout out the person who subbed the other day who supported the patreon because i think it was like a pound patreon which is obviously the entry one so if you can support me for a pound or a dollar i'll be greatly appreciated so i've got a couple of patrons actually i've got two no, I got one, sorry, my bad. I got two. I thought I had more than one. I got Conway Stern. So big up Conway Stern for becoming a one dollar patron over at patreon.com forward slash Agostino A G O S T I N H O. You can find a link in the descriptions wherever you're watching or listening to this on the Patreon. Like I said, you get one bonus episode per week as well as a live stream at the end of the month. So definitely check out the Patreon. Always bonus content on there, good stuff on there. Make sure you join on there. Don't delay. Get involved on the Patreon today but yeah apart from that i hope you're good wherever you are i'm feeling good i'm feeling spicy as you can tell i've got the nice little cold brew in me i've had a little bit of i've had my little feed i'm fasting now for what 18 hours until 7 a.m the next morning and i'm feeling good i'm also about to start the 75 hard challenge which is coming up tomorrow so from then on it's going to be 75 days of working out twice a day reading 10 pages of a book sticking to a diet no cheat meals one gallon of water i don't know what that is equivalent of liters um so it should be should be sick right and i'm going to be taking pictures throughout i'm going to be documenting a lot of my progress throughout it i'm probably going to do i'm probably going to do 10 10 day increments five maybe do five day increments or 10 should i do five maybe i do five I'll do day one, day five, ten, and whatever, so what, because it's obviously 75. Maybe that'll be the best way to go about it. But if you've got a different idea on what I should do, then let me know. But I'm going to do some sort of vlog and catch up on it. I'm going to take pictures. I'm going to document everything. Um, the reading thing shouldn't be an issue because I love reading. I, I was reading, you know, four books a month in the past, so that shouldn't be a problem. Um, the drinking of the water might be an issue because I just forget to do it. I also love drinking water, but I just forget to drink it like most people do. Um, you have to kind of sit down and make a commitment to do so. The working out twice a day is not going to be an issue either because I work out quite a lot. I just don't eat that well. And the diet is going to be the tricky part of the diet because it says basically there's no cheat days. There is no like cheat day on a Saturday or go crazy at the end of the month. No, it's 75 days, of just no Uber Eats, no Just Eats, no crappy shit from Morrison's, no croissants, no or whatever the stuff that I enjoy to eat because that's a problem i have it's not even like i eat horrible it's not even like i eat bad when it comes to like rice and pasta that's the thing if i eat rice and pasta which again i eat it but i'm not it's weird to say right I, i'm not in love with it right as many people are like some people could just eat pasta with some salt on it or a bit of butter and cheese and they're in heaven i don't necessarily care for those things too tough i can eat it of course i'm, I, I'm not gonna push the plate away but i don't necessarily i don't necessarily cook it for myself at home but if i did cook rice and pasta for myself and i made like jacket potatoes and roasted potatoes and stuff i would be a mountain right i'm already big enough as it is if i ate those things i'd be even bigger than i am i'd be approaching wings of redemption level of fatness do you know what i mean i'm not thankful i don't but the thing that kills me is fucking processed foods isn't it like snacks and delicatessens and stuff and whatever maybe pastries i'm a sucker for biscuits uh everything anything in a packet anything that crunches anything where the plastic goes 
yeah, that sound. Suddenly I have like, you know, I get a boner for that sort of stuff, which is obviously bad, but I don't know what happens. Like, oh, those, those little custard tarts they sell in Tesco's, those little chocolate cheat, those little, little chocolate twist things. Like, oh my God, man, I'm awful. Those little yum yum ones. Look, mate, honestly, when it comes to me eating disgust, I, I eat like a... I eat like a 12 year old kid when it comes to that sort of stuff, right? It's horrible. Um, so that should be an issue. But then I work out a bunch, but then I, I wonder why I'm not losing the weight, right? I work out like three or four times per week. And I'm like thinking, oh, I'm not. It's easy to know. I'm not running and I'm not eating well. So it's what it is. I'm going to increase the cardio, working out twice a day, which I don't. Actually, let me get up for you so you can see what I'm going to be doing. Because I'm, I'm sure some of you guys will be um, eager to know what I'm doing here. Let me just get up for you now. Hopefully this works. The 70. Yeah, the 70, 75. Oops. 75. Hard challenge. I think I spoke about it before, right? I think I'm pretty sure I spoke about it before, but this is definitely what I'm going to do. And then the second thing for our New Year's resolution. Oh yeah, just let me just make this New Year's resolution and stuff. So second day I'm going to do my second for my New Year's resolution is I'm, I'm going to be learning Spanish because I'm due to go to Spain um, hopefully sometime later in the year. So I need to basically get my Spanish back down to where it was previously or get it back up to where it was previously, which was quite conversational. I went to Primavera with a group of friends and you know, even though my Spanish wasn't the greatest, I was still able to be like the um the sort of translator for the group which was fucking awesome i could kind of relay menus and what i wanted to eat and kind of read things on the yeah read things on the menu um relay things back to the waitresses and waiters it was just fucking banging but only because i was at that time i was practicing like one hour per day so i had some level of fluency i was watching videos in spanish i was watching narcos and stuff i was just picking up stuff you know what i mean i was immersing myself in it as usual um i was doing the yeah full immersion um r.i.p what's his face um lao Shi on youtube and he's an absolute g he's obviously the one that kind of inspired me to get on this kind of polyglot thing but that's definitely what i'm going to do for this um year on the beginning of this year so of course that's definitely going to mean no alcohol no drugs uh, i'm probably going to sack off the party in until march as well when i finish the 75 hard challenge i think the day that i finish the challenge is going to be like the 22nd of march so probably going to sack off the raise until then which i'm not that bothered about um i'm still going to be doing my mixes and stuff uploading them onto youtube so check out those ones they're going to come up soon but apart from that it's going to be a real concentrated effort to kind of just get my mind body and soul right for these next couple of um months or these next few months just be just just as a shake-up like i said before i've done i've done these sort of things before right i've been to berlin like doing Serb October um, or doing yeah, so Serb October or dry January I've done them both going to those kind of countries and I've been fairly fine so I know I don't have a problem I'm not addicted I'm not having an addict person oh, no I have an addicted personality but I know I'm not addicted to those things that's the thing yeah I never addicted personality but I know I'm not addicted to those things because I was able to break them pretty quickly I was able to go to a place where there's many many temptations right and trust me when you go to those kind of places and you've got my kind of personality and you don't shut up you get invited to places where things that's presented to you that you could just have and enjoy as much as you want and you don't take it that's when you know you've got willpower and again i wouldn't advise it i don't think it's advisable for somebody that's got an addic addictive personality to put themselves in harm's way around things that you probably shouldn't be around but i did it for myself just to, so i can let myself know that i'm not addicted to it so i don't need things to function i still went out and had fun um again i wouldn't recommend going to a rave sober because i don't think it's as fun let's not deny that even if you're just having a little shot of jameson or a shot of fucking um Zambuca, it doesn't matter, right? Those things help just to kind of get you going. Just going to a rave completely stone sober on water alone is not the funnest time ever. And think about it: the people that do go to raves sober completely are the ones that go and they're getting paid, right? If you're a DJ and you're an artist, of course it makes sense for you to go there with some sort of clear mind. But I think anybody else should just sack it off. So I'm definitely looking forward to doing that. And like I said beforehand in another podcast episode, I think it's really important to start the year like this and kind of get a little bit of good momentum, even if I decide for the next, you know have many months left in the year that I just go crazy and do whatever I want at least I started the year with some level of control I didn't just roll into it continually just on the lash right continually going crazy I think that's when you go a little bit nuts and you start to feel a little bit bad you start to feel a little bit disgusted with yourself and you have that kind of like um post uh session regret thing right that down the feeling when you wake up in the morning like ugh, i can't believe i was on it for like that long i can't believe i was drinking that much i can't believe i said that i mean all that sort of stuff but i think in my experience again i think i savor things more and i enjoy things and i enjoy things more when i've when i kind of um when i have some level of what do you call it 
uh, what, what, that, what that phrase is not what's that phrase for denying yourself or something I don't know the, there is something I enjoy about that like that, that's why I think back in the day I even enjoyed having cheat meals more because cheat meals when you first start when you're work, on your workout journey cheat meals have become like one of those things that you kind of dream about on the Tuesday night you're dreaming about what you're going to eat but then the suit the longer you keep doing your workouts the more the cheat meals um kind of um important starts to wane and then the more the cheat me or the cheat days become meals then they become cheat you know item whatever it may become they, they start to become a less less important whereas before when you start you're like oh my god i can't wait to have chicken wings and have this and have that and that but then when you get there you're like oh this is fucking disgusting it's making me sick and it's also good too because it kind of reset your taste buds so all that sugar i've been having all that processed food is good just to kind of reset it be clean and when you start eating a biscuit again it suddenly tastes like you know it just tastes like it just tastes processed it doesn't even taste nice especially if you buy like a shit one for tesco it's just all you taste is the sugar you never taste any of the flavor that it allegedly is supposed to to have so i think that's going to be great but anyway the 75 hard challenge in case you guys are wondering what it is i think i spoke about it before is this challenge here on the screen essentially 75 days straight of the following one you follow a diet zero cheat meals for the entire 75 days so you pick a diet whichever one you want two you work out twice per day for at least 45 minutes each one of them has to be outside i think to get some fresh air vitamin d whatever stretch whatever it may be so that's going to be the only difficult thing because i go to gym all the time anyway i run all the time too but that means i'm going to have to do those things twice per day which is going to be nuts but hey we're going to do it anyway and try so either it's going to be the running in the morning or gym in the evening or gym in the morning or running in the evening whatever maybe it'll be one of those kind of things involved there i was thinking in my head to also include the skateboard i'm going to do in that because this year too i'm going to be practicing my skateboarding a little bit and getting back onto that um which is i will explain another time but i'm probably just going to stick to the running and the working out free drink a gallon of water per day which i'm going to assume is just going to be like a bottle of water per day which is going to be a lot of water to be drinking all the time but still we're going to go for it and i hate having to go piss all the time i'm not sure about you guys that's probably why i kind of um subconsciously don't drink as much water as i should do because i don't want i don't like going to the toilet all the time it's just annoying and I know some people enjoy going to the toilet and love shitting, love pissing, but it just pisses me off after, you know, no pun intended. Four, read 10 pages of a non-fiction um, entrepreneur book uh, per day. I don't need to do that. I've got loads of other books I can read, um, fiction, whatever I'm, I need. I've got whole books of lists, whole book, whole book. I've got a whole book list worth of books I'm going to be buying anyway, so I'll be fine on that one. I read a ton of books anyway, so that shouldn't be an issue. And then five, take progress pictures every single day, which is going to be difficult too because, again, like I said, people kind of underestimate the talent and the hard work and persistence it requires for the Kardashians to kind of consistently and you know consistently post pictures of themselves scantily clad in outfits with makeup all that stuff it's difficult it's hard trust me try and be an influencer try and set up shoots and go gallivanting around central london and posing in front of places and stuff where people walking by it's embarrassing bro the fact that these guys can do it that's a talent in itself and to continually post pictures of yourself especially when you're in the start of your journey and you look lumpy as i do and fluffy everywhere it's going to be difficult for you to kind of stare at yourself semi or half naked and actually want to take those pictures every single day but it's important to gauge your progress i think even tim ferris from the four hour work week always speaks about it when it comes to the four hour body right he says oh the whole i think yeah when it comes to the slow carb diet i think it, it was one of the person that stressed the importance of measuring right so um what's yeah what's, what's i think it's a phrase an army phrase right what's measurable can be something some sort of phrase anyway but he got he would say you should measure everything like your biceps your waist your chest size whatever it may be so that as you're going down your journey whether it's up or down whatever target you're trying to get to you can see how many changes you're making because sometimes the mirror can lie sometimes the mirror you can't see the things or sometimes you're used to seeing your way your way one what yourself one way maybe the scale doesn't work the same way whatever some things just don't generally happen don't necessarily give you the the thing that you need in order to kind of see how much progress you're actually making so that's what i'm going to be doing the next few days so i'm going to be doing a 75 hard 75 days straight challenge for new year's eve for new year's resolution and at the same time i'm also going to be doing an hour of day of spanish that'll be on duolingo that'll be from my books that i've got in terms of learning spanish that i used beforehand and then hopefully the hope is when i do end up going to spain later on in the year i'll be fluent enough to hold conversations um no fluent enough to kind of to basically be able to express my thoughts to the person that I'm speaking to. Maybe not hold a conversation, but express my thoughts. So if I'm thinking something that I want to say to that person, I can say in Spanish, hopefully by this summer that's coming up. Again, it's not a long time to learn those kind of language, but still, considering the base I've already got, I think it should be okay.
Hopefully, fingers crossed, fingers, fingers crossed. But anyway, um, apart from that, we want to quickly move on and then quickly jump onto this one. I think I spoke about this in another podcast, but I did have an opportunity to play it because my computer was going a bit crazy. And talking about my computer going a bit crazy, I've now learned that unfortunately this computer isn't going to be capable of doing any live streams unless I just don't run anything else but OBS. I can't run like a, la- a kind of... um. I can't basically run a window on it. I can't live stream like a show on this computer. I just have to live stream like how I do my DJ sets. Well, I just have the camera and then that's it. And I just take off the flipping, um, whatchamacallit, I take away the the screen of YouTube. I can't do anything else because this computer is not running at the moment. So the plan is now going forwards, I'm going to buy a dedicated streaming laptop. The reason why I'm doing that because at the moment, the place I'm living in, there's not enough room to have a dedicated PC in one corner where I can just do my podcast. I had to kind of move things around to record stuff. So I need to have a, some, a unit that can kind of you know more that's, that's mobile that i can carry around while i'm doing my recording or whatnot and also when i, when I want to go do a stream later on in like a place i'd like to take that laptop too to obviously stream on it so i'd want to have a dedicated pc that i can kind of use and then of course the put the hope is to either refurbish the macbook that i have already here or to buy a new one refurbish a 2015 one i think i've got 2012 so maybe i can pop up to 2015 macbook pro i could then use that for my record box and my you know photoshop and all that sort of stuff i want to do so that's how i'm going to segment it so for now going forward i'm going to use what macbook air that i have at the moment thankful for it but if you are experiencing some jitters and some you know um what you call it uh lag on this video whatever please excuse me i'm trying my best but this macbook air has really been pushed to its limits it probably isn't designed to do what i'm doing with at the moment it definitely isn't designed to stream it can just about record so this is why i'm doing what i'm doing at this moment but anyway that being said there's this guy called robert malone who i think i spoke about before who recently appeared in the joe rogan podcast and he was speaking about an interesting topic called um, mass formation psychosis and um, he is basically explaining how this is basically one of the side effects he's kind of seeing with this mass hysteria going on with the pandemic at the moment it's a little bit annoying um, this whole thing anyway I think in general because it feels like if you're an anti-vax or an anti-lockdown person for whatever reason you become like um, uh, you become flipping enemy of the state for whatever reason and I don't necessarily get it I, I myself am vaccinated I've got double jabbed I'm not going to get a booster i've decided against that but i've been double vaccinated only because i thought that that would allow me to kind of live my normal <clears throat> everyday life and allow me to travel and do the things i need to do of course that's not happened we were kind of sold a dream and things change it is what it is but i think the people who at the beginning who were skeptical of the vaccine in general had their reservations again i don't whether or not it's whether or not it's um beneficial or helpful to the overall com for the overall conversation and to how we're basically approaching a pandemic in the west especially considering we're already an individualistic society as it is we can't necessarily put the good of the of the good of the population above our own good right we don't necessarily think about our neighbor first we think of ourselves first and our friends and our family we don't care about our neighbors so because of that i feel like this idea that we can you know this idea that we can do anything other than a vac- mass vaccination drive to kind of stem the flow of, of the of the virus is a little bit naive and it's a little bit short-sighted i think we're just not the place for it maybe in places like i said you know or for authoritarian countries where they can essentially weld you into your home you can basically you know enforce mass vaccinations and basically still then you know it doesn't prevent you know people from getting the virus and prevent you from getting different strains it is what it is but that aside this dr robert malone guy he was a little bit kooky a little bit out there didn't agree with most of the stuff that he said but i still think it's important to have that voice out there i think as much as it's important to have dr fauci out there saying what he's saying for the people in the united states i think it's also a handful so for helpful sorry to have people who have the opposite view who are going to offer maybe an alternative view then it's up to the population to decide who they're going to listen to but this idea that misinformation exists i just i just don't understand what the misinformation information thing comes from because it feels like on one side you're allowed to make it feels like on one side you're allowed to say things that might be deemed misinformation or things that might be proven to be wrong later on down the line they never really apologize for them or retract what they say they just continue saying what the new thing is but then on the other side if you say something that doesn't necessarily bode with the general consensus suddenly you then get you know you get silence and this guy robert malone got silence got kicked off of all the platforms i'm not if i'm not mistaken um essentially which was what brought him to joe rogan i'm assuming because he loves talking to people who don't have a voice in that regard which is good because he gives people a platform but i also think if you generally do think he's harmful this dr robert malone 
this is not the best way to deal with it. You know what I mean, if you think he's harmful, then silencing him and taking away his ability to share his opinion about the pandemic, especially considering he's a doctor himself, is just dumb. It makes no sense. It just emboldens people who are anti-vax and it makes them more sure that there is a global conspiracy out there, especially with Big Pharma, to silence the voices of people who are approaching COVID or approaching the vaccine with alternative medicines, with alternative um, approaches, like working out, going out, get sun, whatever it may be, right? They all think that's they're definitely a, a conspiracy there where all these kind of social media platforms are in bed with all these Big Pharma companies in order to kind of silence that so people can keep buying the vaccine in order for those guys to turn a profit that's how people feel like it's going to be and it makes complete sense so but anyway did this guy here um spoke about this mass um what you call it mass formation psychosis i thought it's an interesting point to just highlight i'm going to quickly play the clip and then we move on to some other things from basically european intellectual inquiry into what the heck happened in germany oops quickly play again <clears throat> In the 20s and 30s you know very intelligent highly educated population and they went barking mad um and how did that happen um the answer is mass formation psychosis when you have a society that has become decoupled from each other and has free-floating anxiety and a sense that things don't make sense we can't understand it and then their attention gets focused by a leader or a series of events on one small point, just like hypnosis. They literally become hypnotized and can be led anywhere. And one of the aspects of that phenomena is the people that they identify as their leaders, the ones typically that come in and say, you have this pain and I can solve it for you. I and I alone, okay, can fix this problem for you. Okay, then they will lead, they will follow that person through, it doesn't matter whether they lie to him or whatever. The data are irrelevant. And furthermore, anybody who questions that narrative is to be immediately attacked. They are the other. <clears throat> this is central to mass formation psychosis. And this is what has happened. We had all those conditions. If you remember back before 2019, everybody was complaining, the world doesn't make sense, blah, blah, blah. Um, and we're all isolated from each other. We're all on our little tools. We're not connected socially anymore, except through social media. Um, and then this thing happened and everybody focused on it. That is how mass formation psychosis happens. And that is what's ha happened here. So yeah, fairly, um, fairly interesting point, I think for most of us to kind of ruminate on again doesn't matter if you believe or you agree with his points when it comes to covid or if it comes to the vaccinations again i don't necessarily agree with it i still think the best way to deal with this crazy virus that we're all kind of suffering from is to make sure most people are vaccinated but i also don't think vaccinations is a one-size-fits-all thing i think there's people who are being negatively affected by it are being negatively affected by it whether or not it's anecdotal evidence or not there are reports of people suffering some ill effects from the vaccine um obviously ill effects generally it feels like from the lockdowns from industries closing so there's no denying that there are some negatives associated with the kind of um general approach when it comes to dealing with the pandemic definitely 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 we can't can't deny that but to suggest that there is a way to get the majority of people um inoculized or the majority of people safe that kind of requires taking ivermectin or cold plunge baths and stuff cold plunge baths like jogan's doing and shit i just don't think it's logical it doesn't really make any sense doesn't it's not practical isn't scalable just doesn't make sense in, in the long term do you know what i mean long-term vaccines work um they might not be working at best now because maybe the vaccine was rushed i don't think anyone can deny that either um considering the amount of people that were dying around the world all at the same time it makes sense that some you know governmental science vi virus divisions whatever they may be maybe skirted the rules and jumped over a few more red or cut the bit of red tape in order to get the vaccine rushed and approved i'm sure that did happen but let's be honest too that is the best approach that we have at the moment we don't really have any other, other approach i just also the only other thing i'm just annoyed about is just the other approaches when it comes to lockdowns and stuff i think those have been demonstrably destructive um the 
positive benefits of it the positive benefits of it are really really minute especially in the grand scheme of things you know especially with people's mental health we still haven't kind of understood exactly how that's impacted people i had my small little scare at the beginning of the year where i was feeling really down in the dumps and i can only imagine and again i feel i feel like i'm a fairly strong willed person so i can only imagine the people out there who aren't as strong as i am who maybe don't necessarily have the ability to maybe deal with things like the way that i do or just are just unlucky in life in it how they've been dealt with it and how they've been dealing with it so to think that those solutions are the best thing to do and just to kind of kind of enact those restrictions willy-nilly and let people suffer it's just not fair really i think we just need other approaches going forward and hopefully we are going to go see them soon or hopefully we will see them soon in the future and that's the only hope you can have in that one um talking about joe rogan I feel like his brain is broken, right? I feel like COVID broke his brain, like it broke a lot of people's brain for whatever reason. And as I love the guy, right? I love the podcast, love the guy. I've been watching the show since the very beginning. I think I might have started tuning in since... I'm mean, gonna say something stupid like episode 120 or something like that. That might be the first episode I actually watched, like for real. And um, I've been a fan of his forever since. I've been a fan of him just because he was one guy that was just, you know, like you and I rambling into a microphone or listening to people that ramble into microphones about a variety of topics. He seemed legitimately interesting, seemed like somebody that had a great group of friends, seemed to be living a life full of love and life love life and love whatever that kind of sign that people put in their rooms um and seem to be really kind of person personifying what it means to have like fuck you money right where you kind of just do what you want you talk to your friends you give your friends a platform to become famous um you interview cool interesting people people that might not be in the mainstream news because you know usually whenever you see someone with a quote-unquote talk show it's always the kind of hot person the person on everyone's lip right it's never like an underground or an up-and-coming person it's never somebody that the 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 presenter actually likes is somebody that's just pushing in front of them right like if you see that the person like the years and years on some talk show it's not because the person interviewing them likes what he puts out it's just because at this current time he seems to be the guy that everyone's kind of talking about right it's, it was sam smith nice it's years and years guy whereas with joe rogan he'd interview some artists that you never heard of and artists that you probably didn't care for because he genuinely listened to them right do you know what i mean um so i uh, I'm a, I'm a big fan of his. I've always been a big fan of his and I, and I love kind of his podcast and everything that he does. I'm not going to say that I don't. But let's be honest, COVID has broken his brain to levels that probably, I'm not too sure if it's going to ever, ever going to recover. I think COVID has turned into one of those things that Joe's just going to continue to, continue talking about until the end of time. Um, and it seems like he dedicates huge portions of his shows about it. It seems like he thinks about it often. It seems like he's greatly, wor he's deeply worried about it, which makes sense as well because let's be honest, COVID essentially decimated his industry, right? When it comes to stand-up com stand comedy or when it comes to live entertainment, it completely decimated, especially in North America. His ability to go and do shows, I think he had a big tour plan as well with Dave Chappelle that got cancelled, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, so he was doing a lot of things that were going to be, he was planning a lot of big things, especially in 2019 to into 2020, and they all got scuppered. And no matter how much money he had, he couldn't do anything to kind of rectify that. Until, of course, Dave Chappelle came through and was able to do those kind of outdoor shows. But COVID and the pandemic was one of those rare occasions where no matter how much wealth you had, you couldn't escape his kind of consequences or his effects, right? Or his affects, whatever you want to say, right? And I think maybe Joe Rogan kind of is still kind of getting to grips with that, that he couldn't fix the problem. He couldn't just throw money at it. He couldn't call somebody. And it just kind of, again, um, allowed him, allowed somebody who's clearly, again, regardless of what you think of, he's funny or not, he clearly loves stand-up stand -up comedy. He clearly thinks about that craft a lot he clearly performs a lot he's clearly going up all the time so for that part of his life to be completely taken away from him definitely felt like a bit of a blow but damn man joe needs to relax joe needs to fucking relax now he's on this fucking podcast talking about how he thinks he's a fucking what is he he thinks he's a scout right so this is a clip courtesy of the of the podcast where he's talking to a young lady i'm not too sure the young lady is i think it's a recent podcast i think she's a musician he seems to quite clearly like her that's one thing i'd say again a, a criticism of joe joe's taste in music is fucking awful let's be honest uh, outside of gary clark jr i can't think of a lot of people maybe snoop dogg again i just listen to snoop dogg daily i don't really know but joe rogan's taste in music is absolutely dog shite and in general when it comes to arts outside of you know, stand up, stand up comedy, even stand up comedy too. You assume some of these recommendations are people that he thinks are killers or monsters necessarily isn't the best. But again, we all have different tastes. But yeah, he seems to be talking to this young lady in his podcast, and he says something about him being a scout. 
I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know if he thinks he's a canary in a coal mine or something, but it's just weird. It really, really is weird. And again, like I said, as a big fan of his, it's just unfortunate to see that COVID has broken his brain to the point where Joe Rogan legitimately thinks he's been sent on earth to be like a messenger for us when it comes to COVID. And he's, he is a COVID Moses. He is a COVID Messiah. It's fucking bizarre. But let's watch this clip. Uh, I, I'm like a scout, right? Like if you sent me down the trail. You go, yeah. hey, I want you to go down the trail and gather up like a couple hundred million downloads a month and tell us what's up. Yeah, thanks for what you're doing for all of us. Tell us what seriously. You, tell us what's happening. You're a hell of a scout. This is what it's like. I'm not sure if she's joking. Thank you for what you've done with us, but this is part of the reason why Joe needs. This is why it's important that Joe has someone like a Tim Dillon and an Ari Shafir around him. Even if you're not a fan of Ari Shafir, you, you know you're still hung up about him dosing Burt back in the day. But let's be honest, those are the only two guys that we've seen so far on video who happen to be the two people that kind of push back on him. And still, Tim Dillon and Ashifi Shafir still are somewhat reserved and still somewhat pull themselves back when it comes to really going at Joe the way they would, the way they would their other friends. Just recently, Tim Dillon was on the show and Joe said something like, oh, the, the, the food in Austin is amazing. And if you listen to Tim Dillon's podcast, you'd know he's a bit of a pig, right? He likes to eat. Um, he's got a very refined palate when it comes to food, it seems like. And he's been letting us know at every given time when he's recording a show that the food in Texas is fucking garbage. He doesn't stop reminding us about the fact, right? So the fact that he, he would turn around and swallow his words and not say that back to Joe in his presence shows you the reverence he holds Joe Rogan in. But still, outside of that, he still pushes back. Same with Ari they still push back. But these other people, like, thank you for your service, as if, like, he's in the army. What? It's already cringe enough as well in, in America when they, you know, see a random soldier and they go to him, thank you for your service. And you have no idea what that guy or girl did, right? You have no idea if they were even in the army in the first place. But now they're sitting across from Joe Rogan and saying, thank you for your service for what? What's thank you for your service? He started off being really worried about COVID. Then suddenly he started to become really kind of, um, he, started to, he started to kind of, not, not, dimin not diminish, but he saw it became a little bit, eh, it's not that big of a deal, right? When it came to COVID. Then he started to convince his audience or us or just speak out loud, basically, that he was staving off COVID because he does kettlebell swings and takes cold baths and cold showers. Then he got COVID and says he recovered in record time because of how fit he was. But he still got it, right? It doesn't matter. Obviously, he took the alternative medicines. I don't really give a shit about that. But he tried to make it seem like, oh, I got COVID because I didn't get it because I was fit. Then he gets it and he recovers quickly because I was fit. Okay, cool, whatever. And now he's kind of sending all these friends, his juju doctors, to come and hook them up whenever they get COVID. It's just like, huh? Like, I would love to know if the treatments for you recovering from COVID, um, like, like if you had to compare the juju doctor that Joe Rogan has and what you actually get from a hospital if you got money, what does what the kind of results are? I would say they're probably marginal. There's no, probably not much difference right like what what are what are these juju doctors actually doing outside of what these doctors in the general hospital have been doing for the majority of the population which has been saving the majority of lives is any different to what he's doing really and truly i think in the beginning if you didn't if you if you in the beginning you just said i'm not going to get the vaccination and i don't care what happens to me cool but then once you get it it kind of defeats the purpose because you got it now do you know what i mean it doesn't matter you've got it you got every whatever whatever you said you were doing that was preventing you from getting it didn't stop you from getting it, and now you got it and it's just like, I don't, I don't get it. I really don't. Especially when you've got as much money as this guy. Like, it's just, especially in a country that has no free healthcare. Like, it doesn't matter what you do, though, because no one else can do what you do because you have a lot of money. And even if they can do what you do, they can't do it to the extent that you can do because you have a lot of money. These are the same guys who after, when they go on, you know, these, these again, I love these comedians, but they're absolutely R-worded, isn't it? After they go on a massive tour, getting on the lash and stuff before they go back home to their ch wives and children they're all going to sit in a hotel room so i think dave Chappelle does this and you'll get an iv right so they'll get ivs and get themselves um rehydrated and get vitamins in them and whatever else that iv drip does but essentially see all these old men in this hotel room hooked up to these fucking drips getting minerals and whatever pushed into their body most people can't afford that even guys who are you know, maybe opening for them can't afford that. I don't know, whatever, right? People that are maybe on the same level of them but maybe not as famous in terms of, yeah, maybe on the same level comedically but not the same level when it comes to fame, they probably can't afford that. They just have to go back home and drink bare bottles of water before they go see their, before they go kiss their wife at the airport or whatnot. That's all they can do. So this approach that somehow whatever he can do is somehow, some whatever, whatever he finds out is somehow going to be helpful to the general population doesn't make any sense. And also, he's just too... 
He's just too entrenched on that side. That's the problem with Joe at the moment. It feels like he was really concerned about COVID and he had all these, he had all these doctors on who were like doom mongers telling him about, oh, it's going to be a long five years, which might end up being a long five years of COVID, right? But then he's now gone completely on the other side where he's like talking to people who generally, generally, generally think COVID isn't that big of a deal and that it's all been blown out of proportion and that you just need to run a bit and get a bit of vitamin D and you'll be fine. It's like, ah, what? And I'm yeah. like, hey, 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 there's a cliff. <laughs> We're running towards a cliff. Stop, everybody. Everybody, stop. stop. We got to hit the fucking brakes. And they're like, you're an anti vaxxer. <laughs> and they just fucking keep going. <laughs> you don't believe in science. <laughs> Hashtag fuck Joe Rogan. <laughs> and, and I'm. But that science argument is kind of true. If Joe Rogan really backs his beef, right, and he's got the money he's got, if you really back your beef, why don't you just go and launch your own independent study or whatever it may be, right? Why don't you do a peer review on whatever Juju Doctor you got and M. Evans? Why don't you do that? I want to If you really back your beef and you really think your approach is better, go do it. Go go put your money where your mouth is, isn't it? Would you that be the logical thing to do? And then you can basically, you know, it's like what he does with On It, where he says, like, you know, it's been independent review. I don't know how true that all that shit is. I don't know. But I remember, you know, part of the ad read on On It is that, right? That it's been actually, um, it's been actually trialed and all this sort of stuff. Like, if that's the facts, and if you actually think what you're doing is right, and as Dana White said, Dr. Joe Rogan helped him out and whatnot, if that's the facts, then go out and show and prove. But they don't. They just talk from the microphone like how we are doing. But then they get annoyed when people call them out and say they are feeding infamous information out there. It's like, uh, I don't get it. I personally don't get it. But like I said, I love the guy. I'm still going to listen to the show. I still think in all intents and purposes, when it comes to somebody as rich and famous as he is, he's quite, in my opinion, probably the coolest multi-millionaire that exists in the world at the moment. He seems to be the most level-headed one. There's somebody with as much money he, as he has, as much fame as he has, to be in a position where he consistently keeps putting on people on his, he keeps putting people on his podcast to give them a chance to blow, give them more shine. Like the Brian Simpson dude, obviously I've kind of known from um, your mum's house, stand-up comedian. He's not that well known. He puts him on his show just to give him a bit of shine because he likes him. Like all these sort of things that he does that he doesn't need to do goes to show that the guy's got a good heart for sure. But like everybody else in during the pandemic, COVID has broken his brain, right? It's broken our brain in different ways. Some of us have decided to stop doing certain things, to stop talking to certain friends. And it's broken Joe Rogan's brain because it denied him the possibility to kind of continue on with his career that's dependent on him talking in front of large audiences, right? In dim, in kind of dimly lit rooms with not much ventilation. Like he needs that space. So the fact that COVID decimated it makes it, makes it makes some sense why he's a little bit loopy when it comes to COVID, but he needs to relax. Like he needs to chill. He needs to chill a little bit. It's getting a bit too much. Listen to the show and hearing him rant and raves about the pandemic and the lockdowns and stuff. But, you know, we... We move in love and light. We move in love and light. Talking about moving in love and light, I quickly want to touch upon this. This is courtesy of the Joe Budden podcast. Um, I guess they were doing a wrap up episode, maybe, or maybe a, the new episode tool into the new year. But essentially, Joe was kind of reflecting on how they've been able to kind of weather the storm of all the fallout with the podcast with Rory Amal. He'd been getting accused of the sexual assault, the dropping of the cash app and stuff. Like loads of drama around Joe Budden as per usual, right? With Joe Budden, it's never a, there's never a boring day with when it comes to Joe Budden and everything concerning him. And I don't know, man, for me as a fan, somebody who kind of decided to stop listening to the show based upon how he treated Rory and Moore and based upon my idea of their relationship and how what he kind of stood for as a creative and as a man who got completely shattered and again maybe it's my own naivete I know parasocial relationships I know reading too much into it I know I don't know these people I know I know I know but still being a fan of the show and kind of feeling like you're like a fly on the wall, like you're there in the background, like you're there in the corner listening into a group of friends that, that you wish were your friends. And then suddenly realizing that that whole friendship was, you know, built on nothing in, in, in flipping Joe's eyes and that he could at will when he wanted to decide to just fire the entire team because he felt as if like the show was basically him and he was the most important person on the show, which he might have been proved right because the show's still running now. I'm not too sure how you kind of read that. But in general, it was quite hard for me to take because again, like I said, I generally think at, at its peak, the Joe Bunner podcast was legitimately one of the best podcasts that exist. 
maybe uh, maybe top one for me, even above him, even Joe Rogan, in terms of what they spoke about, in terms of black culture, in terms of what they spoke about, in terms of hip hop, in terms of what they spoke about, in terms of just news and sports takes and the banter between them. It was legitimately had a run where it was 100% the number one podcast I'd go listen to every single time. Didn't matter when it dropped, didn't matter how long the episodes were, didn't matter what I was doing, I'd always listen to it. It always came about at the right time. It always provided good entertainment. It took away huge chunks of the day, especially Saturday afternoon when you're just waking up you went to clean the house you went to get ready you go into the gym whatever it may be it was a great soundtrack to have so to for me to be in a position where I'm like you know I'm not gonna listen to it anymore it took a lot but again like I said my whole kind of love for the show was wrapped around their friendship and the moment that friendship was broken or the moment it looked like it was you know it reached a point where it was never gonna be um recovered in any way shape or form or repaired I had to I had to dip out and again you know as much as I love um Ice and Ish who's done a really great job let's not deny them about that right they've come in under really strenuous circumstances and fitted in really well they've essentially helped out Joe in that regard because they've held the podcast together because I think without them the show dies no one wants to listen to you know Parks get on his knees and blow fucking Joe for like you know an hour and a half that he already does at a a time so to have somebody break up that kind of um, conversation and offer kind of counterpoints and have two of those guys maybe push back on Joe a little bit or push back on Parks it makes for a decent show I haven't listened to it in full again since those guys left well I listened to all the clips but from the clips I've seen I still issue doing a good job but that being said there's no denying there's no denying that the fans that have jumped off the Joe Biden podcast jumped off for good reason because most of them had this idea of Joe being one way he exposed himself to be another way and then we decided to make a decision to jump off based on what we saw because we listen to these guys every single day or maybe no, whenever they drop let's say three times a week or two times a week hours and hours of content over the years you know, getting information or reviews or insights on them based on the other people that are close to them, them talking about themselves in the third person, the first person, whatever, right? You can easily kind of um, start to make an idea of what that person's about or who they are as a human being. But I'm sure people can do that to me too. You can kind of figure out what I'm about, what I stand for, how I'll react to certain situations and stuff. So then when stuff comes out about me, you can either... When a new story comes out about me, God forbid, nothing bad, you can either go, oh yeah, that sounds like something he would do, or you can be like, oh shit, that sounds really surprising, right? But you can do that because you've listened to me speak for many, many hours in a day, many, many hours in a week, month, year, whatever it may be called. So you have your right to do that. Now, maybe what I did, I didn't intend it to, to come out that way, cool, but you're in your right and you have the position Oh yeah, you're in your right and you have the faculties to be able to deduce or to figure out what I'm about as a person based on what I say. But for whatever reason, when it comes to certain podcasts or certain YouTubers, certain influencers, they have this weird notion in their head that fans aren't allowed to kind of overanalyze what they say or how they act or to theorize about what's going on behind the scenes. But yet they do exactly the same thing in other people's lives. Every single day when they talk, which is why I do too, right? You kind of fill in the gaps of people that you don't know, who you don't spoke to, who you haven't spoken to. But I don't kind of pretend that I know who they are. But then I also won't get offended if somebody turns around and says something else about me because it's just a game that we play, right? Everyone's throwing out dumb opinions. We're all dumb apes out here just trying to make a buck and trying to, you know, feed our families and stay alive and have some fun. That's it, right? That's all we're trying to do. But for whatever reason, these guys seem to think that the fans got it all wrong. They don't know what's going on. Nothing at all. All our guesses were completely incorrect, which they weren't, because some people, especially on the Joe Budden subreddit, some people were calling out the split and the tension from way back when I wasn't even a believer. I was like, nah, these guys are bugging, they're tripping, Reddit's toxic. Even I was saying that back then. And it all it all got to be revealed to be correct. Right? Do you know what I mean? Like, and, and let's not even talk about the Rory and Moore stuff. Like, what Joe did with Olivia Dope, people were saying at the time of recording when it came out, that that was, that was kind of out of hand. And that was a little bit disgusting. People were saying it then. And now they want to make it out as if like we're all bugging out. But anyway, Joe Biden just does what Joe Biden does say. So, you know, here's, here's him on the podcast talking about it, essentially kind of reviewing the, sh- reviewing the year and basically saying the fans don't know what they're talking about or they've got it all wrong, which is, you know, again, it's typical, isn't it? But let's continue. People get uncomfortable with change. Yeah. You don't necessarily like change, especially when something is going yeah. and something is working, but you got to adapt. And boy, this year has just shown a lot out of people now what the fuck is he even wearing like what is he wearing what's that hat what's that scarf like joe Biden is the most consistently is the most 
consistently badly dressed person I've ever seen in the media. I thought Dino Zemero dressed pretty terribly, right? But again, Dino Zemero, that's a pretty typical New Yorker way of dressing, right? Where you match your trainers with your necklace, with your t-shirt and your jacket and shit. It's a little bit loopy, but, you know, if you've been to New York, you'd know that guys from the hood or guys from ends generally dress like that, especially when they get a bit of money. That's just what they do, right? They just like to look fly, quote unquote. I don't necessarily like it. It's not necessarily a great Euro European aesthetic, don't get me wrong. But just, you know, you can be objective and be like, okay, cool, I don't get it. It's not for me, but they're not badly dressed, right? It's just not for me. Whereas this is like, what is this? A dad hat that says Versace with a scarf that matches the logo color but not quite and a long sleeve shirt like i don't i don't know i don't know the set design don't even get me started are they fucking um what is it is this a gender reveal is this an engagement is this a funeral we don't know we don't know people's ability to adapt mm -hmm. yeah not just mine yeah it's it's across the board for sure Here's, here comes Parks. Your ability to adapt was also impressive. Because you adapt. They're going to call me a dick rider. No, no, no. no. It's, it's, fine. it's fine. It's cool. So. You know they go. No, I just think yeah, you're... Yeah. So. That's what they, they do. Yeah, I don't really care. That's true. I hate when they do that. <laughs> so what? I don't care. But I, I think your adaptation they paint, But they wait. just paint people's character the they wrong don't way. Know, but they, they don't know anybody. I know. I know. And they so, also think that this is a TV show. This is a, a fallacy. This is... <sighs> We're characters playing so the so parts. That's so true. Really? And to some degree, we kind of are. I hate them so much. Wait, some, to a degree, they they really believe. I hate like John Park so much. Playing roles. Correct. Yes. The perception of Never people is this that. is not real human beings. This is people we see on the TV or the That's phone. Or... Who said that? Who ever said that they don't think they're real human beings? Especially on the Joe Budden subreddit. We've all called out Parks because he was the fan favorite for a long time because he seemed to be the only voice of reason in that room on some occasions. Someone that would poke fun at everybody, especially Joe Budden, right? Little jabs here and there. But then over time, when it became evident that Joe was having problems with Rory and Mal, again, no one's bemoaning him. No one's kind of criticizing him from the decision to kind of latch onto Joe. But let's not deny he went from being the person that was quite impartial in some way, shape or form to suddenly being Joe Budden's cock holster because he decided that Joe Budden's where the money's at which was a wise decision in the end because he wasn't never close to Rory Moore like he was to Joe because he's been Joe's engineer so it makes sense and suppose we have heard the relationship between hip-hop artists and their engineers is always a little bit weird anyway they have this weird kind of you know um uh they have this weird bond that can't people can't really get people can't really understand which makes sense we spend hours and hours in the studio chasing your dream trying to chase a hit i understand there's a bond that can be there that people don't really get but let's not deny he went from being everyone's fan favorite to suddenly being joe's personal flipping cheerleader and everyone called it out that was it that's where it ended and he got emotional he got annoyed i think he sent back tweets or messages to somebody in the dms talking about how the real what do you call it um what was it called call him what, what did someone say to him in the dms Something about oppression. I don't know. Something nuts. And he replied crazy in the DM to people. He just seemed like a bit. And again, he was in this on his holiday talking about how he was no on his honeymoon or something. Talking about how he wasn't bothered. But then he was tweeting on the beach somewhere. Like I don't know. He just he just went a bit loopy. And I get it because Parks is not a media guy. He's not a media personality. To suddenly be attacked by people, it maybe felt a little bit away. But let's not de let's not deny it. You act in one way, people called it out, and that's the that's the long and short of it. Um, Ice come Ice talking is a bit wild because his whole personality on social media is about throwing out opinions and kind of playing a character, and you know purporting to be one way. So to him to come out, come out and say they don't know you, they don't know you. It's like, mate, I don't know. You've been on social media for like more than a decade. People can kind of are allowed to maybe frame or work out or kind of put together an opinion of who they think you are based on what you've been putting out there for a long time. It may not be right, it may not be true, but you've not made any effort to change, really. You know what I mean? So I don't know what you want from people, man. I really don't. But these guys are absolutely batshit. Whatever. I never uh -huh. looked at it that no, way. Yeah. That explains a lot, actually. Yeah. Knowing that. Like, some yeah. of the shit I see explains a lot now. Uh -huh. They don't think you have, you as a real person. They think of you as someone that's playing Ice. Oh, I hate this guy, man. You are Ice the character. You are not. Got it. Was chan shit. Okay. The shit that they say on the internet, they wouldn't say to you in person because they would not think of you as ice in person. That's a horrible fucking argument. Who says anything to anybody in person rude anyway, in general? Someone cuts in a line at you at an airport. You don't even call that out, some people. Why would you go and 
cross the road and see a podcast and say, I hated what you said in episode 275. No one says that because who's got time in real life? You can do it on the phone, on the fly, whilst you're multitasking, whilst you're in a shop, whatever, because it's just, this. the person isn't there. It's the whole point of you doing it. This whole idea about, oh, they don't say it, you're in Paris, of course they wouldn't. Why would they? What sense does that fucking make? Like, honestly, it's so dumb. Of course, it's easy to say it on the phone. It's also easy to say Meek Mill's album's trash on the phone. If you're standing in front of you and you ask you what's your album, like, are you going to tell him it's trash? Probably not. Like, it's not that difficult to, like, to figure out. This, I, honestly, I don't know. I think it's a, I wonder what it is. I hope I don't get there. I hope I'm, I stay the same as I am. But whatever happens with content creators, influencers, podcast, whatever, there's something about it. They somehow, it's like when they start, all the feedback from the fans is important, right? What you say, comments, messages, it's good. It feeds the ego, it gives you direction of where to go, blah, 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 right? But then somehow, shape or form, they get to another level and then suddenly, whatever the fans have to say is nonsense. They're trolls, they're detractors, they're trying to, you know, um, they're trying to cause drama, they don't get it. Um, there's a bigger player, there's a bigger thing at play, the gig is the gig. Like, come on, brother. So your fans build you up to get there, but then once you're there, suddenly you don't need them, and they just you know you just um your fans don't know what they want, they don't know what changes. Like what do you mean they don't want changes? It was going all right. The podcast was fine. The guys asked for a again. Let, let's not rewrite history. So from what we know so far, the guys asked for accounting. Joe Budden didn't want to give it to them. And I, I'm assuming at the same time, he was also maybe having reservations about how their deal was worked out, how they negotiated the deal, because he maybe didn't like the profit split thing they had to do. But regardless, they signed it now, it's too late. But he wasn't, he didn't like it. So he's in his right to say, I don't want to give it to you. Now, anything that happened after the fact is what happened after the fact. But the general point of it is that those guys wanted something, some DLs. He didn't want to give it to them. That caused tension. You know, it, it went where it went. But it could have been rectified. If you're a grown-up, you could have got around the table and worked out something that would have kept the show together. Most people can do that. Most people, especially if you're friends. But that's what, that's what again, naivete from, them, from their side, r and when it comes to Rory and Mole, because I think they generally thought that Joe wouldn't do what he's done to others, to them. But Joe clearly showed that he doesn't have any friends when it comes to media or a business. He's just a business guy. He doesn't have friendships from what he's basically shown us, right? Because they were saying to him in a kind of roundabout way, don't dog us out like this or maybe show us the business, show us the books, explain to us what's going on, give us more um, information because we're friends. Just on a friends thing. Not because we're, we, we deserve it on paper, but because we're friends. But he said no in a roundabout way. Cool, no problem. But the fans are allowed to feel a way about that. Like, they're allowed. They're allowed. It's not because they don't want change, because that's something that's avoidable. And again, for some somebody on the show, even Rory and Mole included, they kept speaking about everyone's business and saying how everyone's deals are so bad and how they don't know what contracts they worked themselves into. You got yourselves involved in a contract that made it so you couldn't look at the books or you couldn't get accurate accounting and you got kicked off your own show. That's how bad your, your deal was. So clearly there was an issue there. We're allowed to comment on it. I don't understand this. Like, you're, you, you can suck them off if you want, if you're Parks, right? And in that style, but the moment you have something to push back on, suddenly they get annoyed. It's just like, oh. But see, that explains the why. That's up. why. Because I've come across people that I, I seen what you said online. Uh -huh. And when you see me, it's, yo, ice, what up? Let's have yeah, a drink. Yeah, yeah. Let's, like, you know, you cool as shit. Yeah. I'm like, it's <sighs> like but I All right, all right. Yeah, bad boy, bad boy. What are you going to do? It's true. And this is just a it's a hard. It's a hard pill to swallow, too. Sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. It's a, it's a hard, because I'm still not used to that. I still get offended sometimes. And I got to just put my phone down or whatever. And, uh, it's not really enough. You should get offended because you're Joe Budden cock holster, bruv. You made excuses for the guy when he was being clearly shitty to friends that we... Again, maybe it's our fault. We thought Parks was friends with Rory Omar too. He clearly wasn't. He was more Joe Budden's friends. And Joe Budden's friends happens to be Rory Omar. And then they just hung out together. Because... R Parks is way around Joe because Joe's Joe always recording. Parks is the engineer. Cool, audio engineer. We get it. But we clearly thought they were all friends when they wished they weren't, all right? Because that's why the deal or the business broke down as bad as it did. Who knows? Some people could argue they were friends. That's why the deal got as bad or that's why the situation got as bad as it does because only friends could be that offended by this. I don't know, whatever, whatever you want to say. But the fact of the matter is he clearly picked a side early on when it felt as if at the time, you could say it was perceived as what, what the information we had at that point was that Joe was being a prick to Rory and Mal and Parks aligned himself with the prick. So clearly, if you're lining yourself with the prick, we can call you a prick. 
you can not like it, you can be offended and annoyed, but it doesn't mean what we're saying isn't right. Because with definition, we have only available is what we see and what we read online. That's all we have. We don't, we're not around you guys 24-7. Of course we're not. We're not your fucking fiancé or your wife. We, we, we quit. We can't do that. But if, we, if you align yourself with the dickhead who's mugging off his friends and we think he's mugging off his friends and he's acting like he's mugging off his friends and his friends act like he's mugging off his friends and their friends are friends are thinking he's mugging off their friends, of course we're going to say that. Of course. God damn it. Instinct on my end, I just be like, "Fuck you," like no doubt, of course. But I, I but I expect that to trans translate to real life. Uh -huh. Like, don't yeah. come up to me and be cool as shit will, now. Never will, bro. Don't worry about it. Go ahead. Before you guys got here, I had the big pod them. blow up, and a lot of them out there said, "Yo, he's an asshole." That's not how you treat your friends. Of course, that's true. Which you know is what true. What? How y'all know? That part. <laughs> How do y'all know that? Unless you think that everybody is a character and has a role to play and shoes to fill. This guy is insane, man. You would have to think that you're privy to all of the information and that you're looking at decisions made from everything that you have witnessed. Well, you would be taking some things for granted. We're Seinfeld to them. Yes. That's nice. We're Seinfeld to them. These, these, no, it makes, it these niggas really think they're signed like honest I don't I don't like even if we're not privy to the information that we have available does this guy generally think that he did nothing wrong in that situation does he honestly think nothing that he can't even perceive why somebody would look at that situation not knowing who any of these guys are and just say maybe what that guy did was fucked up the video of him ranting with the empty chairs screaming at everybody they're fired him basically the, the story being replayed that he said to Mal that the podcast is none of your business and him saying yeah I know what I said <laughs> and not even and not even apologizing right saying something rude as that having it replayed back to you whilst you're trying to reconcile with your friends sitting next to you and then instead of saying yeah I know I fucked up he says yeah I know what I said like what it makes, it makes so makes much sense once you said that though like shit just clicked like yeah it explains so much shit. Because I be sometimes like, dog, what the fuck? You, you don't even know what you're talking about. Uh -huh. They don't. It's fine. But nah, nah, what nah. make you think they you're even correct That'd enough to say that? You you don't know these people. Mm. You don't know anyone you're talking about either. You don't know who fucking all these guys are anyway, personally. And you hypothesize about their lives the whole time. Once I've had enough, I'm done. I'm not playing the whole clip. Fuck it, man. These guys are getting on my nerves. They're getting me hot. I love the show when it was good, man. It was really good. It was one of the best podcasts that ever existed in the history of the world. I don't care what anyone says. Then it fell off a cliff because it did, because, you know, things happened. Then they couldn't, you know, reconcile their differences. And then when we tried to psychoanalyze stuff and tried to pull stuff and pull in clips out, they clearly had issues from behind the scenes that we weren't aware about, which some people on the subreddit called out time ago. And it kind of related to what, it's kind of related to what's going on now. They tell you now that you're smoking budge. Or that you think they're characters or that we think we're, they're Seinfeld. Like, jog on, bruv. Jog, I'm glad I don't listen to podcasts anymore. Again, I'm happy that they're doing well. I am hope Joe gets the bag because, again, I think he deserves it for the history and the time he's been around and the standard he's set in podcasting, especially when it comes to the urban community and whatever. But in terms of everything else, I'm done. Like, these guys are dickheads, man. They're, they're all dickheads. They, could, they can all jog on. I, I, I've got no time for any of these guys, man. Like, Gaslighting fans, oh, yeah, you don't know what's... What? Of course we don't know you. Like... What? what the fuck? We are, of course, going off what we see. That's what we see every day. That's content. Same what you, you do about other people when you're talking about them in media or in culture, whatever it may be called. Whose baby mother did what? Who did what? Who hit who? Like, who, who, who shot who? You hypothesize because you don't know the details. You're talking about it because it's the, the, the conversation and the culture at the moment. They just didn't like the attention or light being shined on them the other way. Like, nonsense behavior, bro. That's what I'm saying. The, the same issues that you could blame Rory and Mo for, for always talking about everyone else's business, saying how everyone else's deals are so bad. You know, more calling out Charlemagne, saying that, you know, whatever. And also saying the Breakfast Club is over when it's clearly not over. Rory obviously saying what he said about DJ Academics and then getting completely embarrassed on, online. So much so it maybe led to the ending of his engagement. Like they clearly had some bad takes, clearly. And it clearly affected how they maneuvered in the industry. It clearly affected how they were perceived. And then, of course, when it blew up in their faces, people can point and say, ha-ha. Do you know what I mean? Because you're the one telling everyone else they got bad deals and you got completely shanked by your friend that you thought was your friend who clearly didn't love you in that way. But we allowed as fans to 
interpret that how we want to interpret that because that's the only information that we have available and we're also allowed to call it out if we want to call it because the same way you're watching the fucking kardashians or those guys are watching kanye or watching drake or watching sweetie whatever who they're talking to is the same way we're watching them same thing some of us some of us are i'd imagine there's a big population or big groups of the joe budden podcast group you know listenership who probably don't even listen or watch the shade room they don't even know what the, the they don't care about blogs they basically get the news only through joe budden podcast that's where they get the humor and maybe if they want to research it later they'll find out more but they only find out who sweetie's dating who she's sitting next to because joe budden wants to talk about it not because they actually view these things themselves anyway so essentially they again it's kind of they're they're kind of viewing them as drama through them talking about other bits of drama but then they're gonna say oh they view us as characters of course could you talk about fucking characters I'm going to end. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop because I'm getting hot. I'm getting bothered. There's no point of getting agitated because it's silly. <sighs> anyway, moving on from that one. Um, again, talking about, um, what you call it? Talking about COVID being pe breaking people's brain. This is pretty funny. People have been poking fun at Ethan Klein, but I think he enjoys this because he's a little bit of a narcissist in his own right as well. Another guy who, unfortunately, I feel like COVID has broken his brain. Maybe COVID been, didn't break his brain. He's probably been on a downward spiral from way back before. I don't know what actually happened, but I used to watch H3, H3 back in the day. Then I stopped because I, I found Ethan Klein insufferable, like just too much. I couldn't do it. Similar to Burt Crash, I think he's enjoyable in small doses, maybe even less than to Burt Crash. There's just nothing comedic about him, nothing interesting. Like, I just don't care in it. I really don't. And I don't know. Maybe as again, something subconscious of me as well. When I see somebody that looks like shit, maybe it is a bit weird to say this out loud, right? But there's something about my head. When I see somebody that looks like crap talking so greasy like talking with so much vim and bass in their voice it doesn't add up so i just i just like, i don't know it's like this guy is not like this in real life like what is this like like your superman your call out guy your internet police in your little studio but then in real life you know what i mean like it's just it, it doesn't make any sense like it just doesn't vibe with me maybe that's why i don't know but again i think this headline's a little bit out of order because i still think again in terms of brain broken in terms of COVID maybe Joe's probably gone off the reservation more than Ethan Klein has and I think it's still fun and it's still beneficial to have people in media to have prominent figures like Ethan Klein call out these other people who are saying wacky shit in the same way Joe Rogan could call out him for being a fat shit Do you know I mean I think there's there's it's fair game as long as no one gets offended and wants to start copyright striking people's videos I think it's okay I, I just don't you know I mean I just don't want it to be one-sided but anyway, this is the headline courtesy of the post millennial it said obese YouTuber criticizes Joe Rogan's health choice is um resident youtube lit blowhard ethan klein took aim a popular podcast and host joe rogan on tuesday criticizing him for his health and pandemic related advice it's not well received so this is courtesy of the post millennial it said resident youtube blowhard da, 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 unable to grasp the irony of the statement klein who is also known as h3hg productions decided that he was his turn to be twitter's main character by <laughs> misinterpreting so misrepresenting rogan's views he re his remarks were undoubtedly in response to the podcast Master's recent platforming of Dr. Robert Malone, a scientist who contributed to the newly developed MNR technology in the 1980s. Like many others on the political left, Klein sought to rejoin to sorry enjoin his voice to the growing legion of those suffering from mass formation psychosis with a dishonest appraisal of rogan joe rogan he says here quotes um joe rogan who lives on elk meat egg yolk and human growth hormone with his lungs full of tar thinks he's healthier than everyone wrote clan on twitter this motherfucker is such a bitch that when he got covid he threw the kitchen sink at it if you're healthy just ride it out like you say you man a man should yeah see, see this is what i mean about ethan klein Joe Rogan's gone off the reservation, right? But there's never a there's never a reality or there's never a kind of there's never yeah, there's never a world where anyone's ever gonna listen to Ethan Klein when it comes to health choices. The guy can't put down a yum yum. The guy can't say no to a tackle, but the guy can't say no to a takeaway. Do you know what I mean? He clearly has some sort of body dysmorphia, some sort of body issues, self-confidence issues, lack of discipline that he tries to spin in a comedic way. You see a lot with Wings of Redemption, where he kind of constantly would try to poke fun at himself before you poke fun at him by saying, I'm built like the Michelin man, I'm fat as shit, I can't. You know what I mean? All this kind of like weird jokes that they're not really jokes he's just trying to defend him he's just trying to put shields up before you start throwing stones and arrows at him because secretly deep down when he's alone at night he fucking hates himself and what he looks like which is clear because Ethan Klein looks like complete shit right that's that's not even that's the thing with guys that guys like that and wings it's not like they're they they're the way they look because of poor diet choices or whatever or poor like no diet choices 
or poor dietary choices, you would say, right? It's mostly just because they're just gluttonous, right? They don't have any self discipline. They just look fluffy. They just look like the weight's just like falling. It's not even anything based on any kind of lack of resources or money. Because a lot of, again, look, people from a lot of um, disadvantaged areas, like I, how I grew up in South where you're, you know, you're essentially living on fucking lemonade and cola, two litre bottles of it because they're one pound and the bottle of water is fucking three quid. Then, of course, some of you guys are going to be looking a little bit plump in certain places because the shitty food is way more cheaper than the actually healthy food, right? You can get a box of six chicken wings and chips for 150 how much is a salad going to cost you maybe two pound maybe three pound so it makes sense if you're from a poor neighborhood that you're going to make do with stuff that is more processed and isn't as healthy for you vis-a-vis -vis people who live next to an Irwan or a whole foods and these guys could essentially buy their own whole foods if they wanted to yet wings of redemption and um h3h3 look the way they do because they just can't be bothered so to have somebody like a joe I can get why it could be a little bit ugh, because it kind of reminds you consistently that there's people out there who generally take pride in how they look, take pride in their health. Again, maybe it's excessive to some extent, maybe it's a little bit delusional in Joe's extent because he legitimately thought that he was staving off COVID from doing kettlebell swings and taking cold baths. But still, it's better than what this guy's doing. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's better than what he's doing. What if he catches COVID? What happens then? Does he get. Did, did, does he immediately go on respirator like obviously god forbid but come on man like who's like uh, that, that, that's a thing sometimes when you have two terrible people like you just have to choose the least terrible and the least terrible option here is definitely joe rogan not ethan klein it just has to be said no matter where you sit on the debate no matter where you are right or left let's just be honest like who are you gonna listen to legitimately when it comes to health and fitness you're not listening to ethan klein the guy's built like a fucking sack of potatoes you know what i mean it's just terrible um he added that um, dude has caused so much vaccine hesitancy and misinformation and dishonest even have uh, and uh, and he dishonest and he doesn't even have the balls to stand by the shit he preaches now he's on his show talking about how fat people should die of covid dude is such a fucking piece of shit okay that doesn't make any sort of sense hesitancy and misinformation i don't think comes from podcasters i think comes from the cdc and the government they're the ones that are making people be hesitant and putting out disinformation because at the beginning, what was fucking Fauci saying about masks? Wasn't he saying people shouldn't be wearing them? Wasn't he advising people to stave off buying them because they needed them more for their flipping, you know, the, the nurses and doctors, the same nurses and doctors that are fucking doing TikTok dances and shit, right? And people say, oh, they need to have fun as well, let their hair down. Okay, cool, then take off the mask and give them to the population. Now suddenly the masks are super important and here's Fauci coming in with fucking seven talking through his mouth like this. Like it's absolute bullshit. Those guys are the ones spreading myths information and being dishonest go to the people that are actually in power not fucking podcasters do you know what i mean it's a little bit stupid don't get me wrong is he helping the situation probably not but he's allowed to say what the fuck he wants to say like i, I don't understand it. i don't like it like i said i'm a fan of the show it's annoying to hear him talk about covid for 17 hours in a in a fucking podcast but he's allowed to do what he wants um it continues to said instead of getting vaccinated he takes the regenerate regeneron an experimental drug that was developed alongside rna vaccines his logic makes no sense and then he credits the um, ivermectin which does fucking nothing for covid like again just false statements they might not do a lot but they do something they might not help for you but they've helped some people it's just not i don't see what this stuff is doing like ugh. the youtuber continued not going to mention whatever the fuck is an alpha brain referring to rogan's non-nootropic um, regime meanwhile while joe is on the big pharma conspiracy against vaccines someone needs to ask him who makes environment uh, 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 sorry ivermectin and regeneron and all the other shit he took when he had covid valid points i wouldn't mind him sitting down with joe rogan face to face it won't happen because i think they're quite as sensitive as each other um i don't think joe likes to be pushed back or to have people kind of disagree with his points which is probably why we haven't seen sam harris on there so far because he's clearly somebody who thinks joe's been spreading misinformation not being helpful to the overall um you know fight we have with the pandemic or with the covid vaccine at the moment with covid not vaccine at the moment um and i would like us again as a fan to have more people on who can push back and maybe in this you know push back against what he's saying more so when it comes to covid because it's just getting annoying if we're going to listen to covid all the time let's have some different thing or let's have some difference in opinion let's just, just have him talking at us one way it continues here Klein, a former cultural co critic who exposes the extent of his ignorance anytime he opens his opinions on politics is not against it's not exactly the, a picture of health a fact made evident by the numerous quote tweets and replies on his remarks now again for it for this Ian Mouse Chong guy is not the best person to talk about health and fitness. He doesn't look the greatest either. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, it is quite funny to have these pictures of them side by side. You know, of course, Joe's takes a lot of shit. But, you know, he clearly cares about his health and what he looks like more so than Ethan Klein does. 
who obviously, you know, his talents are not in, you know, making himself look a certain way. Continues, um, it says here, um, someone said, Caleb Holt says, sorry, we should definitely um, all be getting our health advice from Ethan Klein instead, who is clearly more healthy. But yeah, um, what's this? Another person, Laura Chen. So again, all the posts people on the right are, are kind of piling on top of him and stuff. I'm sure Rogan saw it. Whether or not he's going to comment on it is going to be really interesting. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. I think it's all it's all R worded. I want it all to end. I've had enough of all these people talking, you know, all this nonsense when it comes to the COVID. It's just annoying. It really does piss me off. Um, no one wins. You know what I mean? Everyone looks dumb. They're all wasting their time. They're all flipping got money to basically, you know, prevent themselves from dying, especially when they get the COVID. It's not necessarily that important. Millions of Americans don't have that ability to do so. Um, their time could be best spent doing many different things. I'm not in a position to tell them what they're doing with their time. But again, the irony isn't lost on me when somebody that looks like even Klein is talking about health and fitness. It just isn't lost on me. So I completely get the response to it. But, you know, the headline's a little bit a little bit snarky, a little bit unnecessary. But again, considering how even Klein's gone off the reservation, I completely get it. Like I said, if you have to choose between two of the worst people during COVID who have basically brains have both broken, I'm definitely going to go with Joe. I'm not going to go with Ethan. That, you know, that, that point just remains, that, that point just needs to be kind of drummed home again and again and again, Jeremy. You know I like no one's ever going to listen to that guy when it comes to those kind of things. It's just not going to happen. Um, let's quickly move on. We talked about that already. Duh, 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 duh. Uh... Yeah, let's talk about this one. Let's move here. Well, let's talk about one more, couple more, and then we'll leave it, right? What's going on here? Come on, load. Oh, my computer, man. I can't wait till I get a proper streaming one. Obviously, my, com my computer now is struggling. This MacBook Air is like on its last legs. I keep talking about it all the time. I know I do, but this definitely has to get fixed. I can't continue. Because I'm I, I'm panicking and I'm worried that one day I wake up, it just doesn't work anymore. And I, my entire life is on this thing. So I need to segment my life and my livelihood of various different computers and platforms at the moment or devices i need to segment it between my phone between a couple of other laptops and maybe a tablet i can't have it all on one especially not a macbook air it's not really designed to this i'm pushing it too much and air is designed for some writing some streaming um so some writing some online streaming watching videos and whatnot and that's about it maybe some light editing but it's not designed for like you know what i do on it record box photoshop um garage band uh obs do you know what i mean like it's just too much it's just struggling it's just literally crying out for help so i need to give it some help and hopefully that 2015 macbook pro will obviously help and then the streaming platform the streaming laptop that i'm going to get is definitely going to be i'm thinking of getting the acer swift 3 but if you guys have any other suggestions on streaming laptops that you think are going to be great for me to use because again it's just going to be just chatting stuff the stuff that i do on my random show where i'm kind of talking about comedy stuff and whatnot right um la comedy scene stuff so i just need to be able to play clips um you know read articles search on the go too because on this computer when i run obs i can't search it basically slows my computer entire computer down because it takes too much it's basically using too much of my cpu um so if you guys have any kind of solutions or any kind of ideas on what i could use um you know at the moment i've got the acer free and i've got the i think the I mean, is it the dell or something nitro is it the acer nitro 5 or something right those are two i'm looking at but i'm, I'm definitely got my eye more so in the acer swift free but if you guys have any other kind of you know around that entry price like under a thousand pound laptops i can buy that i can use to stream on then please let me know i'd definitely be um open to some suggestions so please let me know in the comments or email me if you can that'd be greatly appreciated i'll put my email in the descriptions of the show so you can kind of email me that way definitely definitely be appreciated but anyway let's quickly end it here courtesy of hypebeast we've got an early look at a new tom Sachs nike craft general purpose shoe interesting right so it looks like we have no idea when the actual mars yard whatever that new one with the brown so with the rubberized toe at the front is going to come out it looks like it's gone quiet i'm not sure if it's going to come out later on or whatnot so far the only release that they had was when they gave them to the wear testers i'm not sure if the release has been postponed because of covid and because of the supply chain issues that will make a lot more sense but so far we've got another leak about another shoe that tom Sachs has put it together um under the nike craft moniker called the general purpose shoe and off the bat they're really ugly right they're really utilitarian they're really plain um you probably wouldn't look twice at them on the shoe shelf but i do like the fact that they are very consistent with what 
Tom Sachs kind of likes in terms of aesthetic, in terms of sneakers, with what they kind of like in terms of designers in their studio. And again, it just kind of is very representative of what he's about as a person. I like this. Like when he's been designing stuff with Nike, he could have easily gone and did a flipping industrialized version of an Air Force One or of a Dunk. But instead, he kind of built his own model, quote unquote, from the ground up and kind of imbued bits onto it like with the soul that catches dirt little things that he's kind of very much for um design principles ways of living in terms of you know being fit and healthy you know organization of the studios when it comes to the 10 bullet principles like all these sort of things are basically imbued and and kind of the shoes basically a living manifestation of it and i like the fact that this shoe that definitely look if you if you didn't know what the clover lab was and i told you after the fact you'd be like, oh yeah that makes sense it definitely looks like a tom Sachs shoe doesn't it and again the the fact that it's called general purpose maybe lends itself more to an evolution or a progression of what he's done with the mars yard maybe this is the next step up where it's like okay instead of the mars yard being more so of like a general because whenever we've seen mars yard co um content it's always been around the design studio the, the obviously the tom Sachs studio um people commuting to work uh people living their lives um um, yeah, design studio, commuting to work, working out, and that was it basically. But this general purpose shoe might be everything in between. It might be the shoe that you go to the studio with or you change into on your way to Lucian's or so whatever, or whatever bar these people go to, right? That might be the shoe that they're kind of trying to promote with this new general purpose shoe. It might be the shoe that you wear to a meeting. It might be the shoe that you wear to your um, exhibition opening or to a gallery Ex, you know a, a gallery open day or whatever it may be called right or first Thursday, whatever they do right um do first Thursdays even happen anymore they don't right during the pandemic they're done in it when's the last time you've been to a first Thursdays where you go to an art gallery or uh, you go to a district where all the art galleries are and they all open the doors for an exhibition they give you wine and drinks and whatnot like or basically a gallery opening but in in london we have these first Thursdays things which are always amazing they're always places to go and like you know score loads of free drinks and see if you could pick up some milfs <laughs> uh see if they could sponsor your life and be your flipping um your patron right um or whatever it may be called but yeah this is the logo underneath it says here general purpose shoe it's got the obviously the tags on it and all the labeling and whatnot so again no idea when these are going to come out no idea if they're going to be more colorways usually it doesn't do more colors usually it's just one colorway so maybe this might be the fact or maybe this might be an evolution of it maybe this might be him slowly filling the shoes of what sakai have done previously i don't i doubt it because i don't think he likes to do as many projects with nike as sakai like to do so i don't know but this could be interesting maybe this is one shoe of seven one shoe of four five i don't i doubt it maybe it's just a whole purpose again it looks it looks if you're wearing the general purpose shoe that could be worn in different sort of maybe settings above a design studio like again like i said a gallery event a bar a restaurant you could maybe get into you could maybe get into shortage house wearing these with a pair of shorts and stuff right because it looks a little bit smarter you put on a flipping button-up shirt on a, a unicorn oxford you could probably get in in most places for sure so maybe this sort of colorway and this sort of palette works well in those kind of things and you know the uh, you know the, the more kind of chunkier sole allows you to be a little bit more or, um to not take the shoes so you know to not be so precious about the shoes um you can basically you know cover most environments and terrains with them so maybe that makes a lot more sense but i just do like the general look of him like i said i like the fact that they're fucking ugly i like the fact that they're plain as hell i like the fact that they again personify or represent what tom Sachs is about and he design ethic and design um ethics and principles and whatnot his codes i also like the fact that they are basically maybe an evolution or a step above what he's done with the mars yard in terms of them being a shoe that you maybe could go to a restaurant or a cocktail bar to go and wear them with and so far we've got no details on when they've been to come out here according to hypebeast official release details for these are unknown but it's likely that they'll see release sometime in 2022 oh duh i love when they just they, i love the fact that honestly, i used to write for hypebeast back in the day i was one of the first writers when they first launched on the blog spot back in the day so big up kevin ma absolute legend used to get paid through paypal writing little uh, excerpts and whatnot or blog entries i wasn't that great i wasn't that great or consistent at it which is why i kind of left or which is why i didn't start stop doing it or my login stopped working i don't know what happened but i was one of the first people on there regardless and this is always a bit of a talent to develop over time to write all this fluff about something that you have no insight on no information again at that time i'm sure it's maybe the same now maybe it's different but back then the brands didn't like to give hypebeast any insight any promo shots nike would consistently email in and tell us to delete stuff like people didn't like their news being spread now they they probably rush and give these sites packs and send them money and give them free stuff to post stuff right okay i'm not i'm not accusing anybody of anything but let's be honest the climate now has definitely changed but back in the day they wouldn't even look at you right when it came to you posting these sort of things so um 
But it's just funny that now it's the same thing as the players when it comes to leaks because you don't want to ask them about this sort of stuff because they're never going to tell you anyway. But you still have to manage to write 500 or so words about a shoe you have no idea um, why it exists, who did it, if that is real, maybe it's a rep. I mean, you have no idea. You just have to write words or whatever and kind of make it make sense. And big up the writer who did so here, um, Elliot Santiago. It's not an easy job. Again, I did it before myself. I've written for Hypebeast, written for Nikes, Nice Kicks, no, Sneaker News, Nice. Yeah, Sneaker News, Nice Kicks. And who else? That was it, innit? Yeah, those are the main ones I wrote for back in the day. I tried to write for Simon Hype. They didn't want me a um, long, long time ago. I don't know if they're still around anymore. I think they were called Slam. They went to Slam magazine. I'm not sure if the, I don't. Sure, I wonder what the guy's doing now at the moment. He got stores. You got another thing going. I don't wonder what they're doing now. Um, but that was a good time. But yeah, um, Tom Sachs, Nike, Nike Craft, General Purpose shoe. No idea what the date's gonna come out, but hopefully they're gonna come out soon. Anyway, that's the Axiom's English Show, episode number 536. Thanks again for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company as per usual. If it's your first time checking out the show via YouTube, smash a like, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below. If you listen via the podcast app, five-star review on Spotify, please. It's a new platform. They can leave reviews on it now. So leave a review on Spotify if you can, if I really appreciate that. Apart from that, take care, be safe, be well. And of course, support via Patreon is also welcome too. If you listen via the podcast app, you're also going to hear a new tune. If you're not listening to the podcast app, what you're doing, what you're doing, jump on there, subscribe. I'll see you again soon. Take care. Peace.